Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome to episode 10. I'm just going to paste in these two little uh, pieces of information for our train and drag them over here because that's what we're going to be doing in today's episode. We're going to be adding a time system into the game along with the amount of distance that we've traveled. Can we actually get this lined up properly? Struggling a little bit here. Uh, there we go. So we've got these two new things. We've got a clock part and a distance part. I'm going to put these inside of the train and then make sure that these are welded to the uh, the platform. So we'll create a little weld like so. There we go. We can see that they are now both safely welded. And all these are just a surface GUI containing a frame and some text labels, just the same as when we created our one for the fuel, pretty much the same UI layout. I've just copied it and adjusted it slightly. So let's actually set the values of these from our script. So if we go into our train handler script, well, we already know how far we're traveling, right? We're already keeping track of that, the progress that we are and what track number we are. And we're going to use that to help us figure out how far we've traveled down the track. But first, let's make sure we're referencing our new distance text. So our miles label, that's going to be equal to the train dot distance is what I've called it. So we'll just find it and show you it on the right distance surface GUI frame and then this text label inside of here. So we'll just write that out. And then inside of our run service loop, we've already got the progress. So we can work out the total progress pretty easily. That's going to be equal to current progress. And then we need to calculate how long the track is. So let's get the track length, make that equal to track dot primary part dot size dot Z. And so then if we multiply progress by track length, then if we know that we're halfway down a hundred stud track, then we're done 50 studs. And then we just need to add on all of the progress we've made on previous tracks as well. So let's get the current track number minus one, then we'll multiply that by the track length as well, and probably wrap both of these inside of a bracket. There we go. That's our total progress figured out. And then we can just say miles label dot text. And we could just say total progress, but I want to format it in a special way. So I'm going to say string dot format, and I'm going to use this percentage sign dot zero F. And what that little code is going to do is it's going to make sure that we don't have any decimal points, right? So obviously our progress could be 0.3111125576, right? But we only want to know, you know, if we've gone one stud, two studs, three studs, etc. Uh, and then on the end of it, we're going to add maybe an M as well, concatenate that on the end. So we're kind of imagining our studs as being meters. So if we play now, we should see... On our distance, it says 11 meters, okay? Because this train is slightly already down the track. And if I start to move, it updates. And now it's 50 meters and it'll keep ticking upwards. The zombies will chase after us, but we don't care. And then it hit about 500 as we reach the end of this track where the station's at and it'll keep ticking upwards um, forever. So that's pretty cool. We've got our distance meter set up very easy. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to set a day night cycle because it's always daytime at the moment. It's always eternally 12 o'clock. So we're going to add in a new script now and we're going to call this time handler. Now, what many people do when it comes to this is they just go into the lighting and they change this time of day value, right? Or the clock time. And if you just slide this around, well, it changes the time of day and they just update this constantly on the server. And yeah, that's okay. But really, I don't want the night to be the same amount of time as the day for one thing. And also it can be a bit clunky if you're always updating that on the server. It's better to update the visual changes on the client. So on our server, all we're going to do 
is we're going to set an attribute of the workspace that our client script can then use. So we're going to set some values for ourselves. We're going to have a length of the day. We're going to set that equal to 100 seconds. And then we're going to have a night ratio. Okay, so how long the night is compared to the day. I only want this to be half as long as a day. And then we're going to set a, a dawn time. That's going to be equal to 6 a.m. and a dusk time, which is going to be equal to 9 o'clock. So in uh, 24 hours. So this is basically just setting when we're going to switch between our fast nighttime speed and our slower daytime speed. And hopefully this will make sense as we create it. So initially, the clock time is going to be equal to the dawn time. And then within a loop, we're going to keep updating forever. We'll say clock time is equal to the current clock time plus one and then we want to divide by 24 see what the remainder is so in other words uh, this clock time value is never going to be bigger than uh, 24 or 23 even if it reaches 24 it will be zero okay for midnight so then workspace set attribute time and we'll just set this to clock time and if we just wanted to set the trains clock in game we can do that easily enough so workspace dot train dot clock dot surface gui dot frame dot and we call it txt time and we'll set the text of that equal to clock time and then maybe dot dot and we'll add in a zero zero so we're always setting it um, an hour at a time you could do the minutes if you want but we're just gonna do solid hours it's a video game after all and uh, we'll come back to all these different lengths of times in a minute but for now let's just say task dot wait one second and if we hit play and we look at our clock on our train we can see that's ticking upwards and if you look in the workspace we can see the attribute is ticking upwards as well and if we wait until it reaches 24 what we should have happened 24 and then down to zero again and then it restarts the cycle cool so now let's adjust the time at which that changes so rather than waiting for one second let's say if the clock time is greater than dusk time or the clock time is less than dawn time then in other words it's night so we'll say workspace set attribute we can call this maybe like time period or day period is perhaps a better name and we'll just say night in capitals and we will wait for the length of the day divided by 24 wrap that in brackets and we'll multiply that by our night ratio so we want to be half as long else it's daytime so then we'll say the workspace set attribute day period now it's going to be day and we'll simply task dot wait for day length divided by 24 now if you wanted you could do all sorts of things inside of the nighttime you could be spawning vampires or werewolves or you know special nighttime related stuff we're not going to worry about that just yet but if we now hit play again what we should see is it's going to go at a pretty slow speed or right? eight then slowly it's going to go to nine and so on and in fact let's just change these values so we can see it a bit better let's set our day length to just 10 seconds instead so it'll tick forward much quicker there we go so 12 and it's ticking pretty quickly less than a second and then when we reach the night time you should see that it goes even faster once it reaches that nine o'clock window. There you go, it ticks pretty fast. Half as fast, or twice as fast rather. <laughs> um, but obviously that's just a clock, that's pretty boring. So let's actually have some effects now on the client. So if we go to start a player, start a player scripts, add in a new local script, we'll just call this day night. And we're gonna get the lighting service, lighting game, get service, lighting. And we're also going to access tween service as well. So we can get a nice transition. And we want to react to whenever the attribute changed of the day period and then connect that to a function. We don't need to react to every hour changing, but if the period is no longer night or it's no longer day, so let's just get the attribute again, then we want to create a tween on the lighting, which lasts, say, 
just one second is fine. And then we want to set the clock time within a table. So clock time to be equal to the night or the day. Now, if you want, you can use exactly the same values that we're using here. So you could do workspace get attribute time and have it that the same as on the server. But sometimes I find you don't actually want those values, right? For aesthetic reasons, right? So at 12 o'clock, you might not actually want it to look like 12 o'clock. You might rather it look like sort of five or six, right? So you get this purple lighting. You know, you can play about with it. You don't actually have to use the exact times. You can do whatever we like, right? Just if it's just for visual purposes. So I quite like the hours of 10 o'clock. So we get a little bit more shadow. And I like the hours of 8 o'clock for nighttime. So it's kind of dark, but not sort of fully dark. So I'm not going to update the, the visual lighting every single hour. I'm just going to have it at this 10 o'clock lighting in the day and this 8 o'clock lighting at night. So inside, whenever the day period changes, let's say... Um, local day hour equals 10 and local night hour equals 20. So the clock hour will equal whether the period, if it's equal to day, then we'll set it to day hour. Otherwise, we'll set it to night hour. And then the clock time will equal the clock hour we've got. And then we just play that tween. So now when I play the game, it's going to stay at, oh, we've got an hour there on our day night script line 11. So that's this tween. Oh, we just forgot to close off our bracket. There we go. Another squirrely parenthesis. And there we go. So it's going to stay at 10 o'clock even though the, the server clock is changing. And then whoop, it's going to flip immediately to night and back to day. So it's pretty quick when we're just doing a 10 second day. But if we made it a little bit slower, you would see it a little bit better. So let's set our day length back to, say, 30 seconds. And now we should see it a little bit better. We could even be driving along, couldn't we? So there we go. We're going to reach nighttime very soon. Let's look at the sun. And whoops, over it goes. And it's nighttime briefly. And then it's back to daytime again. So, yeah, 100 seconds or however long you like for your day. Probably not 10 seconds. That's very brief. Feel free to play about with all the different values here. Maybe you create something fun. But that's kind of it. We've got our clock and we've got our distance traveled. As always, if you want to get the project files for this, they'll be available at gnomecode.com all the links in the description but thank you very much for watching nice quick episode today that's all for this one i'll see you in the next video goodbye